I was the duty officer that Saturday and, and Sunday. And I received the call, it was in the afternoon, by, from Mr. Lundahl to uh, get a crew in, better get a crew in, that the Secret Service was going to arrive sometime that evening with something that required some work at the center. So uh, I called Bill Banfield, head of the lab, and I called uh, Ralph Purse, a photogrammetrist, now, Bill Banfield's res responsibility was not only the photo lab, but also uh, he had a, the unit that would make the briefing boards you know, from the photography. John McCone called Arthur Lundahl and told him the Secret Service needed some help and for us to uh, aid them in any way that we could. About 10 o'clock, they arrived, two men. They, they identified themselves as being from the Secret Service. Only Bill Banfield, Ralph Paris, and I discuss things with the uh, two Secret Service men. While you worked at NPIC, did you know a gentleman named Ben Hunter? Yes. Was he there that night with you? No. Are you sure about that? Yes. Because Ben Hunter is, was uh, in the, in, it was a photogrammetrist in, in the photo, photogrammetry, and I didn't need him. I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have called him in. Did you know a Homer McMahon? I knew him, yes, but not that night. When we got to the third floor, uh, the fellow opened the box and he showed me, I recognized it immediately, it was eight millimeter roll of film. I took the film and, uh, and I put a six power two magnifier on it and I could see uh, the print. It was fully developed. When you received it? When, when, we, when we received it. Okay. I have here a, uh, a roll of eight millimeter movie film uh, which I'd like to show you and ask you if this is the type of product you received on Saturday, November 23rd, 1963. Yes, I can see the individual frames in there. Okay. And I can see the sprockets. This was, this was what we had. Okay. Okay, now the problem was that we didn't have a projector to take 8 millimeter. So Bill Banfield said, uh, uh, I'll call Fuller D. Albert. This was a store down in downtown Washington that uh, had photographic supplies, a lot of Eastman Kodak photo supplies. And so uh, he said, let me see what I can do. So he called the uh, manager of the store, and the manager said, yes, he had a, uh, an 8 millimeter projector, and so that he would meet Bill at the, uh, at the store. So Bill goes down and, and uh, comes back with the 8 millimeter projector. Can you estimate this many years later about what time he might have returned with the projector? I would say around midnight. Okay. When Bill Banfield came back with the projector, we projected it on a screen. Not once, but several times. The first time caught us all by surprise, what we were seeing. And that was uh, to see Kennedy's head portions of his skull fly into the air. That was a surprise to me, that was a surprise to Bill, that was a surprise to Ralph Pierce, and that was a surprise to the Secret Service men. It was a surprise to the Secret Service men. Does that mean that they had not viewed the film yet? Yes. That, I took that impression that that was the first time that they saw it. So then they, they said, let's run it slower. So they ran it slower, and uh, several times, so that we uh, then I asked him, I said, now what do you want of us? He said, well, we want prints from, from this film. I said, all right, what, suppose you move up and you indicate which frames you want and we'll mark it. When we ran it through, we took a little piece of uh, tape. Let's say that you tell me you want this frame. I will go, that's, that's so precious that I'm not going to touch that one, but maybe 10 frames away I will, I will put a mark on the, but then I will know that I have to go back 10 frames. I see. See, So you don't want to damage the one that you want to enlarge. The, the one that you want to enlarge in any right. shape, form, or way. Did anyone count frame numbers from the beginning of the film to the end? Yes. Who did that? Ralph did it mostly. I see. Were they concerned with... Uh, Number of seconds between shots? Timing? 
Yes, they wanted us, uh, they wanted us to, to time it. And Ralph Purr said he didn't like that idea. If that's a Bell and Howell camera, he, he knew immediately that it was spring wound. And he knew that as it was projected, it would slow down. In other words, the timing at the beginning of the film might not be what you have at the tail end of the film. And I said, I told Ralph, I said, would you write that down? And later I, I included that in the note that I sent to Lundo. We had misgiving because we didn't know what he had, the number of frames per second that he had set his camera on or the tension that was on the, on the, on the, on the wind-up. I understand. Do you recall a conclusion by the Secret Service or by your NPIC team uh, at the end of the night as to how many total shots have been fired? Do you recall anyone concluding what the total was, or, or did you? No, uh, no, no. Okay. We were, we were stayed strictly. No, they they didn't ask, and we didn't. Okay. We didn't offer anything like that. Okay. Dino, do you think you had an original home movie or a copy? And no doubt in my mind, we had the original. And why do you say that? Because two reasons. One. The 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 fact that the Secret Service was bringing it in, and the second thing is when I looked at it. It, it was not processed in, in a typical commercial fashion. It wasn't in a box, a little box or anything like, like that. It was very well controlled all the time. That film was controlled by the Secret Service all the time it was there. I've never seen that film like the night that I looked at it. Was the, were the images sharp or a little bit fuzzy? Maybe? No, no, they were sharp. It was obvious they, they were concerned about our handling of the film. When I told them, I said we were going to use white gloves, and I, I told them what, what to do and what not to do when they were working with the film, because I, I didn't want anything to disturb the film that they'd given me. I knew it was an important film. Now, it was never referred to as a Zapruder film or anything like that. It was just, a, to them, it was a film, but a precious film at that. The other thing that I was worried about is that sometimes when you when you run film through a, a projector, little chips of film will will uh, will break off. So, but this was a brand new projector, so that we wouldn't have that kind of problem. And in order to make four by five inch prints from selected individual frames, what what would the steps be for a photographer to do that? Well, they take it into the photo lab. Now you got to make a deep DN. You got to make make a duplicate neg. And when you say duplicate neg, do you, do you mean as a motion picture or of individual frames? No, individual frames. Okay. The National Photographic Interpretation had the finest enlargement capabilities in the world. Would it have been normal procedure to make blow-ups from a copy film, or would you always have wanted to have the original? Was it important? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I would... Uh, the further you get away from the original, you, you lose, and especially in color, you lose it very, very fast. Uh, you get away from uh, two or three uh, from the original, and you've, you've lost uh, a good portion of the information that you need. The idea was to give the Secret Service the best quality we could give them on the, uh, on the imagery that we were, we were looking at. Do you recall any image bleed over? No. Between the sprocket holes? No. Okay. What two or three things did they focus on the most? What did they want to see well, as a product? Well, the first thing that they, uh, they kept uh, working with is the signpost where the... Where the uh, There's a freeway sign on Elm the freeway, the, the freeway sign mm -hmm. where the, the car and the occupants disappear and then as they come out of the out of the, the, the stand, that especially, uh, we, we moved it frame by frame so that we could get, see what, what was happening to the president. And then as we pulled it away, we could see that he was, he was grabbing his throat. But I mean, they, they made us stop it the minute the car appeared. In the projector. In, in, the, in the projection room. Mm -hmm. And then we made prints after that. Then the other one, of course, was uh, the, uh, the actual shooting of the president. We made, made, made prints of that.
But uh, and when you say that, do you mean the head explosion? The uh, well, the head wound. The head wound. I think we made two. Just at the beginning of the uh, of the blast, and then the the one that I remember was that there was a a, a chunk of body uh, of his head uh, in uh, above his head, and uh, and then there was a uh, uh, there was a uh, like a little mist or cloud around it.